During World War II, both sides of the conflict were troubled by the same issue, which was how to protect vulnerable sea lanes. In addition, they also needed to consider how to operate aircraft from damaged runways. As a result, the development of vertical takeoff and landing fighter jets was put on the research agenda. However, due to the technological limitations at the time, the entire World War II saw little progress in the development of fixed-wing fighter jets with vertical takeoff and landing capability, except for significant advancements in helicopter technology. In 1947, the United States initiated the Hummingbird Program, the purpose of which was to develop a vertical takeoff and landing fighter jet that could be used on general commercial ships, destroyers, and other naval platforms. The aircraft would be able to take off from ships when they were under attack or at risk of submarine attacks, in order to assist in defense and even counterattack. The Hummingbird program produced several test aircraft, but only the Convair Company's XFY-1 test aircraft was successful. The aircraft successfully achieved vertical takeoff and landing. The main challenge in the development of vertical takeoff and landing fighter jets at the time was the lack of powerful enough engines. Some articles have suggested that the XFY-1 used some concepts from the World War II German Focke-Wulf Triebflügel aircraft, which used a vertical takeoff method with the tail of the aircraft landing and the nose taking off, with a large propeller mounted on top with a rocket engine to provide lift through rapid rotation. However, the Focke-Wulf Triebflügel was clearly not successful. After World War II, turbopropeller engines gradually matured, and this small-sized, high-output power engine paved the way for the development of the Hummingbird program. The Convair Company's XFY-1 prototype was nicknamed Pogo due to its unique landing gear. The aircraft had a cruciform wing structure, with triangular lift wings, and relatively small vertical tails and ventral fins. The normal control surfaces of the aircraft were still located on the wings, but each wing had a wheeled landing gear installed at the top facing the tail, with a spring-based shock absorption structure inside. The aircraft was powered by a 5,500 horsepower YT-40, 16.2 turbopropeller engine, driving a pair of coaxial counter-rotating propellers, which provided both the vertical takeoff and landing power and the only power for level flight. During takeoff, the pilot's seat was not completely facing the ground as one would imagine, but was at a certain angle, similar to sitting in a reclining chair. This position made it more convenient for the pilot to observe ground signals, adjust the aircraft's flight attitude, and also reduce fatigue. The first test flight took place on April 19, 1954, and initially, the aircraft only underwent vertical takeoff and landing experiments, requiring a specially designed ground vehicle to lift it upright, after which the pilot would enter the cockpit. The tests proved that the aircraft could indeed achieve vertical takeoff and landing, but landing was quite challenging. The pilot not only needed very precise control of the throttle, but also had to constantly turn his head to observe the ground to confirm the flight attitude and distance from the ground. In November, the aircraft underwent its first experiment of transitioning from a vertical to level flight attitude. While the aircraft successfully achieved level flight, the lack of corresponding control surfaces made it difficult to control at high speeds. The XFY-1 made its final test flight in November 1956, after which the related development work was largely suspended. Although this test aircraft had many problems, it was undoubtedly an early and relatively successful experiment in vertical takeoff and landing. However, it also proved that with the existing technological conditions, this structure relying on the propeller at the front of the aircraft to provide lift was not only operationally complex, but also limited the aircraft's performance in many ways. Perhaps this is why the United States temporarily abandoned independent research and instead opted to purchase the Harrier vertical takeoff and landing fighter jet. The XFY-1 vertical takeoff and landing test aircraft was single-seat, 
with an empty weight of 5,345 kilograms, a length of 10.7 meters, a wingspan of 8.4 meters, a height of 7 meters, a cruising speed of 640 kilometers per hour, a maximum flight speed of nearly 1,000 kilometers per hour, and a maximum altitude of 13,320 meters. The prototype was not equipped with weapons, but plans called for the installation of either 420mm machine guns or MC for rocket launchers.